Well, Mr. President and Mr. President, I've never sat on the platform with a Mr. President in my life, but two Mr. Presidents at one time. This is, this is a treat for me. God bless you both. Uh, you're no strangers, neither of you, to this island. I think, can I call you President Tommy? Just not Fisherman Tommy would do. Fisherman Tommy, no, 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 no. <laughs> President Tommy, you, we were just chatting. Is it 36 years that you've been involved in public life, public service? Yeah. Amazing. God bless you for that service. Absolutely. <laughs> and President Sarango, you're sitting in the hot seat now, right? I guess you could say that, yes. Yep. But you know, it's a joy to serve. And uh, I'm blessed by uh, the privilege of knowing you both, getting to know you both, and particularly your interface in this story. This is an incredible story. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, Pastor Tommy, just thinking back, you were the president at the time of this uh, unthinkable tragedy. Uh, did I call you Pastor Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> I got a new title. <laughs> Fisherman and pastor and also president. God bless you. Oh. <laughs> um, but President Tommy, uh, you didn't even want to come and re-experience this, this, this nightmare, did you? Yeah, yes, Pastor. Uh, when I first got the invitation to watch this film, mm -hmm. I really wanted to politely say no, I, because deep inside, I did not want to relieve these memories. This yeah. was not something anybody would be proud of. Mm -mm. So the sooner you forget it, the sooner you take it out of your memories, the better. And I, I thought to myself, if I'm going to watch this, I'm going to relieve the darkest day in Palawan history, mm -hmm. the most shameful day that any of us went through. And I had to ask for a separate uh, link so I could watch it perhaps on my own just. Mm. But the more I thought about it, I said, if I go to last night's viewing, I would probably feel the same emotion like any of the, my mm. fellow countrymen would feel. Mm. Uh, and I'm glad I came because there's many uncles, many lessons uh, about different part of the process, the long journey, mm -hmm. that just kind of makes you even more uh, forgiving, yeah. even more uh, acceptable uh, to the fact that, that things can go better from worse to being better. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm here, and I do want to thank the, uh, all the people who have put together this film. Yeah, we're grateful to have you, and we are grateful for the team that produced this, uh, this incredible documentary. Um, President Sarango, you too were in the thick of this, but you're in a different position. You're, the, you're a businessman on this island. You're an active member of the congregation where the pastor served before he and his wife and son were slain. When you got that phone call, we heard your voice on this trailer, at 4 o'clock in the morning that Melissa had been found. What was going on in your mind? How were you processing all of this? First of all, I was in complete shock. I'm sure. Um, not only because we had lost Pastor De Paiva, Margaret, and Larison, but also what had happened to Melissa. Mm -hmm. And to top it off, I was told that it was one of our employees. So it was, I felt just as guilty. Did you? That we contributed to this. Mm -hmm. And there's just no, nothing to explain mm -hmm. um, how we felt. Yeah. What's amazing to me, and of course the whole point of this documentary is the bottom line of forgiveness, but it was a two-stage forgiveness when you think about it, and both of you were key players in the two stages. I want to stay with you, President Sarango, because Ruth DePaiva, had you met Ruth DePaiva before? 
Had she ever come to this island? No, I, I'd never met Ruth. Mm -hmm. Of course, I knew Remar and Margaret. Right, right. And um, uh, we're close to them, but I did not know Ruth. But I do want to share that at 7 o'clock in the mor morning, that morning. The first morning? The first morning. December 23. Right after um, I had heard the news. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Justin does every morning is come to me to get a PO sign for materials he needed at the job site. Mm. And when he showed up that morning, the question I asked him was, I need the names of all the Palawans that were at the job site because we've been told it was one of our employees. Who is wearing one of your yeah. logoed t-shirts. Yeah. And of course, a few hours later, hmm. we realized it was him. They realized it was him and they um, brought him in. I want you to describe that moment and I'll get to, uh, to uh, President Tommy. Because uh, Ruth DePiva comes, mother, grandmother's here. Of course, she goes to the side of her little Melissa. But then she says, just on the spur, I want to I go to the prison. I want to go to the jail. So you were with her. You went into that room to meet Justin. And you, you witnessed the first stage of this profound forgiveness. Tell, tell us again that, what, what, that, what that moment was like. Well, I, as I recall, we were, I think, at the church. And um, it was decided that she wanted to go. Okay. So I just so happened to be there accompanying the other pastors that were with us. And I think none of us understood why she wanted to see him. Mm -hmm. um, like my dad say, in our minds, he didn't deserve to live. And I was so angry at him. That's what I felt. Mm -hmm. And um, um, she wanted to see him. Mm -hmm. And we went with her to accompany her there. Uh, when we arrived at the, the jail cell, and I were, we were together there, um, I was kind of at the corner looking in on him because I wanted to see his face and see his response. Mm. But you didn't know what was coming. I did not know what was coming. Yeah. Um, and when she asked him the question, why did you do it? Mm -hmm. and, and when he responded, um, I did it because of the TV and VCR, that just made us more mm. angry. Um, and we did not know what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. But in the conversation, you know, when she asked him what his name was. Justice, Justin. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, your name means justice. And she told him that you are going to have to uh, suffer the consequences of what you did. Mm -hmm. But I forgive you. Hmm. I think everyone was shocked. Right. I can imagine. And then... What, was, what happened on his face when he heard that? Did he comprehend what she had just said, that she, that she had forgiven him? I think she said, we, have, we forgive you. He was silent, yeah. so I recall. I don't think he said anything. He mm -hmm. was just silent. Mm -hmm. And um, he continued, she continued to say, I want to see you someday in heaven with my son. All right. And that's really when we begin to realize that we really don't really truly understand mm. God's love for us. Yeah. What she demonstrated was really 
how much God loves us all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, many times at that time I was um, st still, uh, you know, a business person, but you debate and you sometimes think that that's why they take people's lives if they commit these crimes. Mm -hmm. And still in my mind, I felt that. Yeah. And I feel bad for feeling that, but that's how I felt. Mm. President uh, Tommy, it was really a two-stage forgiveness. The first, directly to the perpetrator, as uh, Mother Ruth uh, referred to him. But you were in, the in this gymnasium, the national gymnasium. This is the aisle that we saw in that clip last night. And people were sitting on the sides. And here was the gathering of the dignitaries. And you, as the president of the Republic of Palau, you were there. What were you thinking? He made this beautiful and eloquent statement. But when she, when she leans over and she motions like this, I want uh, the mother of, is she here, mother of Justin? And then they bring her forward. What's going through your mind as you watch and listen to what uh, the Ruth Depaiva speaks into the microphone? So Pastor Nelson, I think uh, I can honestly say the people in the room at the time mm -hmm. were not only shocked, they were so angry. At the same time, you we were all so ashamed mm -hmm. that this can happen in Palau. As president, I can honestly say, I was so ashamed. Right. I was so, uh, it, it was just an unbelievable thing. So in our culture, when the, pep, uh, the pep perpetrator of a crime like this, Sometimes we send the representative of the family to, to say the, the apologies mm -hmm. or do something in Palawan uh, custom. Uh, but we did not expect the mother to come here with some of the relatives and they sat on the floor. And we did not, nobody in the single room expected Hmm. Mrs. Ruth de Paiva to motion for the, the mother to come up because it was still so fresh, so shocking, hmm. so horrific that the last thing we wanted was to talk about forgiveness. We were just saying, let's pay our, our uh, condolences, our respect to the pastor and his family, but this is something that's going to be like... Um, a really sad and shameful thing for the world. So when they hopped, you couldn't hear a pin mm. drop. It was such an unbelievable gesture uh, that there's hope in forgiveness. And I think that was the moment critical to Palau also coming down from that uh, uh, really uh, angry, angry mood that we, we want to lynch mm -hmm. uh, Justin. Then last night as I watched the film, mm -hmm. I saw many part of the process and the uncles that really helped me to, of course, the second most important thing was Melissa herself mm -hmm. to, to go to jail. And yes, as President Whip said, when she told Justin I hope to see you in heaven someday hmm. and meet my parents. Uh, who am I or other Palawans not to forgive mm -hmm. if the person who, who is hurt the most can forgive her mother, herself, her family? And that's, that's, the, that's, the, uh, <laughs> that's the strength that I, I don't know uh, how she's aged. The family was able to show, mm -hmm. but we thank her because that's the calming factor for Palau. I think after that, everybody said, let's hope, let's hope that this forgiveness can really make a, uh, a lesson also. 
and for Justin to also go through the process, mm -hmm. I think uh, was also a, a part of the forgiveness that even today we're telling ourselves we have to forgive, we have mm -hmm. to accept this. Mm -hmm. uh, if they can do it, then we have to also do it. Mm. Well, you both, through your leadership and through both of you being men of faith, uh, were instrumental in Melissa's life beyond the moment of the tragedy, the compassion that you, you demonstrated to her. And my, my, my last question is, does that compassion, faith, and uh, forgiveness, uh, this is the, probably the hardest question of all, uh, does it play out in politics? Does it play out in the government? I mean, how, how, how does a man of faith be a man of forgiveness in the political realm? In my country, I mean, it's a national pastime. It's just, it's a mess in America, as you already know. You've, you've been able to protect your own nation from that, but... Final question, how does this faith and forgiveness play out in the real world of life and government and politics? I'm a fisherman these days, so I can tell you. <laughs> well, um, have you been watching a lot of YouTube and looking stuff up on Wikipedia or... <laughs> but, uh, you know, mm. I think at times, emotions, um, people take sides, and people may say things that hurt each other. Mm. And sometimes it's hard for us to forgive, mm. hard for us to reconcile, hard for us to work together. And I think what's most important is uh, keeping the lines of communication open mm -hmm. and being able to um, talk. Mm -hmm. Because I think once you set up those walls and you're not able to communicate, um, you're, it's, you're done. Mm. So... It's so important uh, to be able to reach out. And, um, and I know um, that what I did probably in 2016, um, when I ran against the president. Oh, you ran against each other? Yes. Um, I hurt people's feelings. Mm. I know that. Mm. And um, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people um, to uh, forgive. And it's hard sometimes to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But I think what's most important is, is being able to reach out and bring that forgiveness. Because at the end of the day, we're all God's children. We're all one family. Yeah. And I think um, that's what we have to remember. But sometimes it's hard. And um, um, I apologize for any feelings or any hurt that I may have caused before or in the future. Because sometimes, as politicians, we do mm. cause heartache. Mm. But we must always ask for forgiveness and try to do better. And I think the example of what Justin, putting his faith in the Lord mm -hmm. and asking for forgiveness and being able to meet Melissa, and most importantly, the incredible faith, incredible uh, show of um, courage that Melissa showed in giving that forgiveness mm -hmm. to somebody who did the most unspeakable thing that could never happen to anyone. If Melissa can do that, we should all be able to do that. Mm. And 
So we nod our heads in agreement. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you. Thank you for your example. Thank you for your leadership, your continuing service to this country. God go with you. Give you grace and peace. I just want to use this time and really thank Melissa herself. Thank you for coming back to Palau. Mm. Uh, I think uh, the crowd here last night was uh, a lot, but I can, to, I can tell you that out there, people are talking about the lessons in life that we should learn from your examples, from your mother's, grandmother's example, and from your families and friends. And, and I think that's the most important legacy, is that we can free ourselves from the captivity of a horror and turn it into something positive, that we can become better people, better persons, and better believers. Yeah. Thank you. Well put. How about putting your hands together and letting the presidents know how grateful you are for their leadership. Thank you. God bless you.